There was a moment in time, a brief, beautiful moment, when the Champs Elysees was filled with more people than it had seen since the liberation of Paris, celebrating a unifying moment that brought French people from all walks of life together. Zinedine Zidane, the son of two Algerian immigrants, had his face projected on the Arc de Triomphe, three years after Jean-Marie Le Pen's far-right anti-immigration party, Front National, had received a then-record 15% of the vote. People sang Zizou for president. Of course, one football tournament could not solve France's deep-seated social issues, and nor should it have been expected to. For those interested in this aspect of the 98 World Cup, the superb documentary Les Bleus, une autre histoire de France, or The Blues, an alternative history of France, looks at the relationship between the French national team and wider French society in more detail, and is one of the best football documentaries of recent years. But whatever followed that brief, beautiful moment, the moment itself was remarkable, and it came about as the result of a remarkable team at a remarkable World Cup. France 98 had more than its fair share of really good football teams. The hosts and eventual winners won this and the subsequent Euros. The Brazil side, who fell to them in the final, were packed with talent and won the World Cups on either side of this one. Beaten semi-finalists Holland and Croatia graced the tournament, and there were impressive performances along the way from Denmark, Nigeria, Argentina and an England side made exciting once again by the presence of young upstarts like David Beckham, Paul Scholes and an electrifying Michael Owen. Owen and Beckham had seminal moments in their second round tie against Argentina, though for very different reasons. The former scored the goal that announced him on the international stage. The latter kicked out at Diego Simeone and got sent off, making himself a pariah in England forcing a siege mentality to develop around him at Manchester United, which resulted in probably his best ever season, the 98-99 treble winning campaign. Major Premier League players played a key role in this World Cup. Emmanuel Petit and Patrick Vieira combined in the heart of France's midfield, and their Arsenal teammate Dennis Bergkamp scored one of the goals of the tournament, in fact one of the all-time great World Cup goals, against Argentina in the quarter-finals. Frank de Boer hit a long, raking pass into the area from deep in his own half. Bergkamp killed the ball with his instep, cut inside, sending his marker, well, to the shops, and then poked the ball home with the outside of his foot. The Dutch commentary, which consists of a man shouting Bergkamp's name in an ever more excited fashion, is one of modern football's greatest moments. Holland only lost on penalties to Brazil in the semi-final. The truly phenomenal Ronaldo reached four goals with his goal in that game. On the other side of the draw, France faced up to the glamorous and thoroughly effective Croatia, spearheaded by tournament top scorer Davos Suka, and illuminated by the languid brilliance of Robert Prozenecki. Concerns about where France's goals would come from proved misguided thanks to a surprising source. As Musa Akwanga points out in his article for UMAX at Football, Lillian Turam, the brilliant defender, he scored 15% of his total career goals with a brace in one World Cup semi-final. The final started amid fierce controversy. Ronaldo's name was not on the team sheet, and then it was again, in spite of the fact that he was clearly nowhere near his best. The rumours of what happened have been varied and ongoing. In 2014, Celso de Campos Jr. catalogued the speculation for 442 magazine, and they included sponsors' influence, a mysterious medic, speculation around a nervous breakdown, the involvement of FIFA, and a sex scandal. In spite of Brazilian parliamentary inquiries, we are still unsure of the truth. The final, then, belonged not to Ronaldo, the best player in the world at that point, but to France's talisman. Zidane struck twice with headers from corners. Petit put a shine on the scoreline with his injury time third. France celebrated its diverse and brilliant football team, and for a moment, it felt like the world had changed forever. In the end, of course, it hadn't. But it's not up to football to change the world forever. Football's job is to change it for just a moment. And France 98 certainly did that. <laughs>